my dad! Admiral McCarty, all the warp thrusters engaged! Warp thrusters are on standby, waiting your orders. Excellent! Go ahead and we'll engage the thrusters and begin warp! Thrusters engaged! To the final frontier! Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is The Final Flick Tier, in which you and another player, up to four, will be playing a game of dexterity in space. You'll be commanding a full nation and our planet of different types of aliens, and you'll be attempting to destroy your opponents. What will you be doing throughout the game? Well, you'll be flicking your die and or ships, and you'll be trying to place stations down. You'll be attacking your opponents. Hopefully they won't escape as they try to uh, complete missions, as they try to bomb you off of your planet and do a whole bunch of other crazy stuff. There's alien races, and then there's a human race. There's certain classes that are going to be able to attach to your ships and control them with mental telepathy, as well as, of course, you'll be getting tech cards that will have special special abilities, on, well, special attacks on them that will range from a number of one, two, or three, I believe, or maybe even more, in which you'll be utilizing for attacking and building different stations on your player board. is going to have these different little stations that are going to be able to place down onto certain planets, which will give you resources to complete missions, as well as to complete your upgrades and all other great stuff. And what you're trying to do is obviously complete one of three different scenarios, having the missions deck end, or having uh, you complete your last settlement, or the last amount of points in the game be distributed. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner of a final flick tier. All right, let's go down and I'll show you all the components of the game and then we'll talk about it. Prepare to fire torpedoes! Firing torpedoes! Pew, pew, pew! Pew, 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 So here we have the game, the final flick tier, and everything that's going to be included. Of course, this is all prototype material, so it's all subject to change, but here's what we got. We have two mats. They're going to have planets on them. It's going to have sectors and so zones as well, and you'll be getting to place your aliens on each of your home worlds. Every single player is going to get a player mat, which is found here, as well as little tokens that will describe how well they're doing on upgrades, whether they're advancing along the track or not, as well as, of course, hatcheries and hives or colonies and work gate, these different structures you can build on the planet. All the planets are going to have their own unique resources, and as you can see, they're kind of double lapped just so that because there's a lot of space here they're going to be needing throughout for the game. There's four different players, four different colors, and they all have different uh, special abilities, they all have different uh, types of buildings, as well as, of course, different upgrades. Uh, and everybody's going to be starting with different cards as well. There's a, four different decks of cards over here, they're going to involve trade goods, graphine, quantum, and tech. Everybody has their own unique types of die, as well as, of course, mission cards that you'll be trying to complete throughout the game, and these hidden objective points things here. And finally, last but not least, they're going to include this little hyperspace card, which actually has a lot to do with fighting, which I'll explain in a bit. But this is pretty much what you're getting in the game, along with, of course, a box and a rule book. All right, let's come up and I'll tell you about how to play the game and how to set it up. So in the game, the final frontier, it's pretty simple to set up. You're going to put down the two mats, put up next to each other, and then you're going to give everybody their player die as well as their player board, along with any tokens that are going to be included. You're going to get out nine missions, or depending on the number of players, maybe more, maybe less, and you're going to deal out three. Every Every single player is going to get one of each of the different types of trade good cards and you're going to set up the board to add these little chits on them uh, for each of the planets to give the different random resources that you can gain throughout the game. Each player has their own unique planet space and next to the planet space is going to be the actions that can take place through the turn and of course every alien race has different die. You're going to make sure you set all of your upgrades to zero and then you're going to choose a starting player to begin the game. In the game you're going to be taking actions such as attacking or uh, you're going to be able to do moving and exploiting, completing, returning and uh, upgrading as well, all these different things you can be doing, which we'll talk about now down below, uh, and I'll also show you a couple turns of play for the game Final Flick Tier. So here we are back to the game Final Flick Tier, and I went ahead and set it up for two players. We're going to go ahead and remove these guys here because we won't be utilizing them, just so I can show you how to play the game. Over here, of course, we already set up the guys, and they have their uh, upgrades set to zero. They each have their own unique tech cards, and they're going to have their uh, their dice allocated to the locations. Uh, the green, the, the, the blue one is over here, I believe. And it tells you Cordovale is the faction, so that would be this one right here. And then we look at the Noxian Empire, 
And that one is going to be right over here, I believe. No, 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 over here, the Noxy Empire. So we won't be utilizing these at all. This one over here tells you is the um, it's an asteroid field and it's for the Surge. And this one here is for the United Earth Alliance. So we'll go ahead and take all these dice off. Um, and of course, uh, you might want to probably play across from each other, but that's up to you really. You're gonna take these things and you're gonna shuffle them up and deal them out like I did. Deal out three mission cards, there's six here for a two player game that are uh, extra as they come through. Your hyperspace card, just set it aside, you'll be utilizing it later. Of course, your extra random cards and all your random uh, different resource cards and points. And uh, in different player games, we're gonna have different amounts of points. This one here is going to have 11 points for a two player game. And then choose a player. So the first player here is gonna be blue, so we'll be use, uh, utilizing the Core E Vali Trade Federation. And in which case, you can go ahead when you're on your planet and set them to whatever side you want. Now remember when you're going to be flicking them though, they might change and they might become something different, which is why maybe setting them to sixes or the highest number may or may not be good for you. Depends on how skilled of a flicker you are, I suppose. Nevertheless, though, uh, the couple of the actions are pretty simple. You can choose to move, which is pretty simple. You're going to take one of your die and you're going to go ahead and push it across the field, which is basically like flicking it and then you can stop. Now, with your second move, because you get two, you can choose to move the same one, or you can go ahead and move a completely different one. That's up to you. Uh, when you're flicking, you want to go ahead and make sure that you uh, move the pieces uh, off uh, of your area or whatever, so that they're not blocking anything, all the different uh, little chits and stuff. If they're die there, you leave them there, but anything else that's blocking your way or your path, you can move when you're flicking, just so that things don't get flown around, okay? So that's one of the different actions. You can take two actions on your turn. Another one would be to exploit, and you would be exploiting the different planets with your different um, lo locations on them. So maybe if you had one over here, one over here, and when you chose to exploit, you would get a purple card and you could get a blue card, which can be very very useful because that's how you're going to be able to build more of the warehouses and markets or uh, for the Noxians, the outposts and the armories. So exploiting is very valuable when it comes to getting resources. You can complete missions. So if we look over here, there's different missions. This is what this one here says. If you land on this sector, uh, you can choose to spend an action to complete this one. So if you're on, let's see, this one says it is 7170. So you take one of these at random and place it there. And then if you land on the location, you can then choose to use an action and take this, remove this card and you'll gain this many points and it says two. So that's how you're gonna be gaining points with exploring. You can expand and conquer it. It says have three ships on different planets. And then this one over here says if you can, if you deliver a certain thing to this specific planet, uh, the trade goods to this planet, you're going to get two victory points. Whenever you get rid of a mission, you put one down again. And, and of course, as the missions get depleted, the game will slowly come to an end. Uh, you could also, of course, return. So if you actually knock off one of your ships for some reason off the board, off the playing area, you can choose to use your turn action to bring all of your ships back to your planet. You can choose even on the board if you want to as well as there's an interesting uh character called the bug and that's from the uh that's from the surge if it's attached to your character in some way controlling it you can take that bug away and also bring your ship back as well um, another one is going to be build and upgrade and if you look over here i'll go ahead and take this and put it in the front here is you'll see there's upgrades and it's going to tell you what it's going to cost to upgrade so for instance if i want to use an action to upgrade i would need to have this quantum here it says one quantum you can move this here and it gives you plus one to combat cards and on the back here is your combat and then up here it tells you like one reflick per attack so on and so forth as you're increasing so that's one, that's two, and then that's four, but that's four tech. And so it tells you the cost to upgrade. It's one action for one upgrade, and you can choose either way, either way you want to go on the tree. And of course, if you want, you can build these different things here. It tells you what is required to build them. This is uh, one of everything, and I believe this is uh, two of the, what are these guys here called? The the I think it's two quantum a tech and a graphite and then you can build an armory when you build things you have to be on the locations in order to build them and you're simply going to put down a building and those will allow you to do certain things depending on what it is whether it be gaining victory points or allowing you to exploit the land uh, to gather more resources attacking is similar to um, to basically moving if you have a character here and a character here the attacker can choose to play a card face down and the defender can choose to as well or, or yeah, when the attacker has to place a card face down. The defender can choose to as well. And then he, the attacker is going to flick. Now, before he flicks, he's going to take this hyperspace card and place it behind the uh, die that he's attacking. And he's going to have three th different things that can happen. The first thing is when he flicks, he misses, misses completely, right? And in that case, nothing happens. He just stays where he is and the, the, the attack doesn't go through. Another case is that the, the dice hits it and it flies on, onto the hyperspace card. If that happens, that would actually trigger a hit. 
Um, and of course, if it landed past that, it would space warp away. So you have to make sure that you get it on the card, basically, is the idea. Uh, when that happens, if a successful attack occurs, everybody flips over their cards and checks their die numbers. So six and two is going to be eight, and five, and if you pick nothing, would be zero, it'd be five. But if maybe you pick this one here, flip it over, that'd be seven, in which case this player would be the winner. So that's how you can, do, that's how you win on attacks, and that's how you utilize attacks as well. And players are gonna take turns, just two actions, and then move on to another two actions, going back and going around in a circle, depending on the number of players. And uh, you're trying to do three different victory conditions. The first one here is there is a, a point total, which you can gather. Once the last one has remained, that can trigger the end of the game. Over here is once all the missions are done. And the final one is if somebody plays their, their final structure, that can end the game as well. And in which case, you would trigger the final scoring of the game. And whoever has the most points is going to be the winner of the final flick tier. And uh, that's the basic idea of the game. There's Players are going to have different die with uh, different sides and different amounts. Obviously, the ones with uh, more sides are going to be a little easier or a little funkier to roll and more likely to change. However, they can uh, attribute higher die numbers, whereas somebody like the Surge is going to have these lower four-sided die, but they're going to be very difficult to uh, turn to move over, so they might likely always stay as three, so that can be good, I suppose. And they also have the special abilities like this bug here, and all players have different special abilities. But anyway, let's come up and I'll tell you what I think about the game and any caveats that I may have missed. All right, so a couple caveats for the game. Like I said, every character is going to have their own unique die set. They're all going to have their own unique upgrades. And we'll go ahead and grab one of them, and I'll show you, tell you the different upgrades on one of them. We'll utilize the uh, Earth Alliance. Uh, up here on the top resource tech tree is going to be a plus one move and a minus one resource, resource to buildings. And the other side is going to be uh, using warp gates to travel. So this is special that they have specifically. Uh, a one reflect per move action and two victory points per uh, for colonies. And then, of course, colonies and warp gates. And the warp gates are the ones that are going to be utilizing the special ability. Um, and then, of course, the surge. That's one of my favorite. They are the ones that basically have a lot of um, different hatcheries that can gain victory points. But they're also going to be able to... Uh, make you use the bug. And the bug's interesting because the bug is going to allow you to flick that little sphere on your turn as a free action. If it hits an opponent's die, you can then go ahead and utilize their die until it has been removed. And the only way it gets removed is from a return action. Uh, and basically it just locks them down. They can't utilize that die. So it's very, very powerful. And of course they have a plus one victory points for hatcheries and your mothership can't be destroyed. And your mothership is the larger die uh, in, in the surge. Another thing to note too is when you're flipping, you're doing the cosmic encounter aspect of flipping the cards over, revealing what they are, including the die total, you're then gonna be able to use them. And, and, and if you beat a person in combat, they're gonna return their ship to the planet and you're gonna gain a victory point. So that's, that's why you do combat. And finally, when you flip over a card and utilize it for its plus two, you can still utilize the card as a resource of its type. But when you utilize a card for a resource of its type, it's gonna to go to the discard pile. So you might wanna determine the order in which you're gonna be doing that. Um, and and these cards range from one to four, one to four points. Okay, so what do I think about the final flick tier? Well, it's a dexterity game, so any of you non-dexterity players out there obviously have probably already stopped watching because you're not going to be interested in this game, most likely. However, uh, it does have some interesting aspects, okay? The first thing it has is all the different characters have different die, and they have stronger abilities if they have less dies. Uh, they have more different things they can do. Each of the different uh, races are going to be different and unique in their own way as well as being able to add the cosmic encounter aspect of putting down the resources and flipping them over to include into your die attack. That's really cool, I really like that, because you can kind of choose what battles you want to win and when you don't. Sometimes it's better to lose a battle. Specifically, if you don't want to use a card in combat and you want to use it for later. And also, maybe you're more about trying to build colonies, less about attacking. There's going to be specific colonies that are better for attacking, obviously. Some of them have like a 12-sided die and 8-sided dice. Those are very powerful for attacking specifically. And of course, that's not the most important thing of the game. The most important thing of the game is acquiring missions. But attacking can benefit you with points. And when the point totals run out, that can trigger the end of the game along with the missions. So it's kind of up to you how you want to play this game. Do you want to play it more of like a 4X style of a game because you're exploiting, you are exterminating, you are uh, doing most of those things, but it's all, all a dexterity based game. The artwork's pretty solid, it's it's, it's fine what it is, it reminds me of kind of like a little, a an older Star Trekian kind of feel to it, and it has the little shooting of the lasers, I mean, I, I like it, I don't mind it, I like the fact that it's on mats too, I'm not sure how they're going to do it as far as uh, the final production, uh, as long as the board stays soft and nice, I, I'm going to be happy about that. Of course, the one thing that's interesting is this hyperspace card where it makes it cool because you have to you have to kind of 
trigger how you want to do your attacks. If it doesn't land on the card, you're going to be in trouble. And if it lands past the card, it's going to let them escape. And if you miss, of course, that's just normal in a, in a normal flicking game. But you want to make sure that the cards stay flat. And in this case, it was okay. Sometimes it would just it would hit, but it wouldn't go over the card uh, because you know it's a little higher lip. So I don't know how that is going to to change. Um, but it brings a new interesting element to the game. Overall, it's a fun game. I like dexterity games specifically, so I'm interested in dexterity games. This reminded me of a little bit like Gravity Warfare meets Flick 'em Up kind of thing, and I enjoy that type of game. I like the fact that it adds a little bit of 4X, and you can play with up to four players. So overall, definitely, definitely check out this game if you like dexterity games, if you like die flicking and or die rolling games, because it's kind of both, right? And if you like 4X games. If you're not into the dexterity, if you don't like the fact that... Um, I, I don't know, like the maybe the artwork or something like that. I, I, personally, it's good. I just I, I enjoy these kind of games. Uh, I didn't feel samey because it felt like there's just so many different things you could choose to do on your turn. And um, overall, yeah, I mean, it's up to you. Check out in the description below though. But for me personally, a positive experience, a fun game. Do check out the final flick tier currently on Kickstarter in the description below. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, please check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. We do greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out the final flick tier, which will be on Kickstarter probably by today. I think is when we'll be releasing this video. And if you're interested, it's one of those games where it's hard to come up with like negatives for it, other than maybe what could be prototype materials or. Uh, maybe artwork because this is gonna be a game that's going to appeal to certain people and not appeal to other people and for me it just, just appeals to me but uh you need to make up your own mind decide for yourself whether this is something you uh, are interested in and do check out the campaign as well as checking out my website unfilteredgamer.com we have tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more and our friends of thingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek two other great sites that do lots of giveaways as well we're currently giving like three games on the site all of which are pretty cool so you should do check that out that's in the description too all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to seeing you in the next final tier <laughs>